Welcome to this tutorial video and what I've done here is actually shown how you actually configure an AIM dash if you're going to be using it with a simulator. So this is an MXP Strada which I'm configuring for use in iRacing and hopefully this video gives you a great idea of how you can customize your view and set up every different aspect that works for you. So I hope you really enjoy this video. So here we are in Race Studio 3 and we're going to set up an AIM MXP Strada for use with iRacing. Now the first thing you can do is actually connect the device to the power and then plug it into the USB port on your PC. And once you've done that, you can see this little arrow will illuminate and you can see connected devices. Now, mine's connected. I've changed the name of mine because I've been using it for a while now. But if you want a quick refresh on how to do that, you can just pop into properties here, change the name and transmit and you can call it anything you like. And so the device is now connected and the live measures that you'll see here will be mostly the data that's coming in straight from the ECU channels um, that are uh, from iRacing. But I want to be able to show you how to do that and set up something from scratch. And so to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click up here with this gear icon. And you can see that I've got all these configurations of this MXP Strada um, available for iRacing with different cars. Now you may be wondering, well, why have you got so many different setups for a single dash? And the simple reason is, is that as you drive different cars in iRacing, the settings and parameters are going to be different. And so every time you want to be able to either change your own custom uh, views or change parameters which are specific to the vehicle, and I'll explain that in just a minute, you're going to need to load a new dash. And so if I were using a Formula Renault, I'd load this up. If I were going to use uh, a Skip Barber car, I'd load this one. The reason being is that there are different variables per vehicle and per dash to use. So let's start off with a new one and I can show you how that all works. So I'm going to click up here on new and it's going to say, well, what device do you want to set up? And because I've been setting an, M an MXP Strada, I'm going to click here and click on OK. Now there's something here, we can call it anything we like. And I'm going to click here and I'm going to do um, something along the lines of iRacing because these are all my iRacing setups. And I'm going to do maybe a uh, Corvette GTE. Um, which is something I've been using just recently. So I've got that there, and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on OK. Now, the first thing you see is channels. Now, these are the channels that come in when you use the dash traditionally in a vehicle, and you may have analog inputs through different channels, and you'll see all this information that's available. What we want to be able to do here, however, is we want to be able to tell this dash to read information from iRacing. So we're actually going to click here on the ECU stream, and anyone who's familiar with setting up a dash and seeing ECU streams, you'll know that any of these will bring in different information from ECUs of different vehicles. But we're talking about simulators right now. So I'm going to scroll down to S area um, on this list and find where simulators are, which is here. And so you can say simulators via USB. Remember, this device is plugged in via USB. And if I click here, I have an option list of three. Now I use iRacing, so I'm going to click on iRacing here and I'm going to click on OK. Um, it's going to give me some messages here about different information. This just says you've activated fuel used. I'm fine with that. And so what you can see here is all of the channels that are coming through from iRacing um, converted through the simulation manager, which um, we'll talk about in a different video. And you can see that all of that is now available here uh, for you to be able to then plug into your dash. So that's the first thing. Now you've got all your channels to be able to use. Now I'm setting up uh, an MXP Strata. I also have a shift light module, which I'm using to be able to understand predictive segments. So if I'm doing better or worse on a lap, um, I will see different information. So if I go to that uh, setting to set that up, I need to go to can expansion. So if I click here on expansions, this is where if you had a traditional dash set up, you may be adding things like um, a GS dash if you have an Evo 4S, or you may be adding in uh, other variables. But here I'm gonna add the shift light module which is here, and I'm just going to click on OK. And it's going to ask me what I want to configure. Do I want it to tell me the shifts uh, uh, points, or do I want to use it for predictive? Now, I'm going to use predictive for the simple reason that I also have those um, shift lights on the actual MXP Strata itself. And so I'm going to say use for predictive time. I'm going to go in here and say I want it plus minus best time at 0.1 seconds. This means with these 10 LEDs, if I'm one second up, all of these will be lit green. If I'm one second down, all of these will be lit red. And so every one of these is a 0.1 increment. It's just a quick visual way of being able to see how you're doing as you're um, progressing through your laps. And so I'm gonna leave that there 
which leaves um, the next parameter to be able to set up. Now you can configure all of these with math channels, but uh, typically you'll probably work on shift lights and alarms as next. We don't want to set an alarm just yet, so we're going to cancel out of that there. And we're going to look at this and say, okay, well, I want to be able to determine where these shift lights are. Now this is the number one reason why I have all of those different configurations in um, my Race Studio 3 for iRacing rather than just having one single dash setup. The reason being is that you may have a vehicle that revs to nine and a half thousand RPM. You might have another vehicle that you're using might rev to six and a half thousand RPM. So if you're using the Skip Barber RT2000 on some of the Skip Barber races, that engine doesn't rev that high. Whereas if you're running Daytona in a GTE, that might rev to nine and a half thousand RPM. So you wanna be able to know which is which. To be able to configure that, you can either just click in each of these and change, or you can click on this gear icon here, and it will give you the option of changing how that shows up. Again, two options that are available here. The first is that you can um, change these individually by, by clicking in them and saying, this is where I want that RPM range to be. You can also click in and say, I want the lights to show up in a certain way. Or you can click here on the graph um, and it will allow you to be able to model it for you. Now, some people like um, RPMs that sort of go in an arc and some people like it in terms of a progressive sort of number that builds up um, as this one is showing right now. And so lots of options to be able to use. Now, to save time in this demonstration, I actually have the shift lights already made. You can export any shift lights that you've set up. So I'm going to click on import and I'm going to find the one that I'm setting up here, which is this Corvette. I'm going to click on open. It says this is correctly imported. And here are how my dash lights are set up now. Now I have this so they actually appear in an arc. Um, you can see it if I go here that this is how I have the dash lights set up. And so as it gets progressively um, more towards max RPM, the lights progress on either side. So that's how I've set that up. And I'm fine with that. Which leaves me with the last thing that I want to be able to do here is to click up here in display. Now this is the display I use. Here, you're going to find a layout of two different types. Now, this is if you're using this MXP Strata in a streetcar, because you can configure it to be able to give you additional information uh, that's coming in from a streetcar, like um, engine warning light, for example, or your washer fluid is low. But we're setting this up for racing, and so what we'd like to do is to go to this set one, where these pages are more familiar from a racing point of view. And so all sorts of different options that you can set up. All of these are configurable for how you want to be able to use them. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up so that we can see some simple sort of uh, information on screen. And so I'm actually going to set up this rally page. It's not necessarily applicable to um, uh, rallying. It's going to be on a GTE car, but that doesn't matter. This is where you get into user preference. So there's the setup first and foremost. And so the first thing we need to do is to be able to make sure that our shift indicator here with the RPMs or just the RPM indicator is right. This currently shows for 18,000 RPM. But if we go back to the shift lights, we notice that we max out here at 7,100 RPM. So we probably want the uh, this to be a different amount. So I can scroll down here, click on this little icon here, and I'm probably going to make that 8,000. So that's more accurate to what we want to see. Next thing we're going to do is start adding components of data that we want to be able to see as we're looking at our dash. And so if you remember, we set up that ECU. Now those channels are available here on this ECU setting and we can add them. So the first thing I want to do is actually add in this box the gear that we're in. And so if I click here, you'll notice that this changes to a hand um, and it's grabbing. Um, notice the icon. And if I drag that, I can drag that over and just drop it in here. Now I've got the gear and this will be every time I change gear, I'll see that, which is great. Next thing I want to be able to see is um, uh, a little bit of information about um, speed. So I could say, for example, I wonder how fast I'm going. So I can grab that and I can drop that maybe in here. And so we're going to drop that in here. Now, now's the time to take a pause if you're setting up your dash, because if you're looking at this in the UK or if you're looking at this in the United States, you're going to notice that says kilometers per hour. We use miles per hour, and so we want to change that. The reason I didn't change it at the beginning is that this is something which is important because it will apply to many of the channels and making them specific to you. For example, I don't want to see kilometers per hour and I don't want to see a decimal point because I don't care if I'm going 32 and a half miles an hour or 32 miles an hour. I just want to see the general speed. And so what I need to do is click up here on the ECU stream. I click back in here and I'm going to go to speed. Now you notice here that it says kilometers per hour. 
and with a decimal of 0.1. If I click in there, and then I double click it, now I've got the option of being able to change that. I can change the name, I'm not bothered about doing that, but there's two things I want to change. Here I want to change that to miles per hour, and here I don't want any decimal place. If I click on save, that will change. Oop, too many clicks there. And you'll notice now that that says vehicle speed in miles per hour. If I go back to the display, now I've got miles per hour, no decimal point, which is exactly what I wanted to be able to see. Now I can start adding additional parameters in here as well. And so one of the ones that I like is the lap channels because this is useful. And so I can add in some additional information for me here, which is I want to be able to see best time. If I go up here, I want to be able to see the current lap time, which here, and maybe plus minus best time, which I'm going to drop into here. Like that and so that's my lap time information um, I'm a very simple uh, sort of dash setup so I don't want necessarily much more than this so I can go in and I can change some other parameters as well so I want to be able to go back to the ECU and the only other things I really want to be able to see um, in this model here for example is um, fuel level just in case running an endurance race and I want to see how much of that fuel I have left um, which I can do there so now that's set up as how much I want to be able to see. Now these have got decimals. If I want to change this to liters to gallons, I can do that. If I want to change the decimal, I can do that. We just go back to that ECU setup um, that we've uh, created previously. I can also change the names of things as well. So if, for example, I don't like the fact that this is fuel level without a space, I can just click on this little icon here and I can change it. Um, and if I click out of it, now you can see it's fuel dash level. Um, but you can change it to any name, that was just for demonstration purposes, it's just you can change it to any name and any variable that you want to be able to see in there. Plus you can configure any of these in terms of colours. If I right click on it, I can change the settings um, and the colours of it as well. But generally speaking, that's how that's you know set up now. It's nice and simple as I'm driving around, I can basically see how my lap times are, I can see my um, shift points, I can see how much fuel I've got left, I can see how fast I'm going, uh, and then I can use the um, shift light module as a predictive indicator. And that's that. However, if you want a more complicated setup, you can add so much more to it from the ECU channels, and that's where user preference really kicks in. And so the last thing you need to do, my recommendation is click on save, and then hit transmit. And once you've done that, now that dash is ready for you to be able to use if you're running that vehicle. And so very uh, important in terms of being able to set up lots of different variations. You can have multiple pages. For example, one of the things that uh, you know I've been thinking of working through is maybe if I'm using the same car in a sprint race and an endurance race, I have one dash for sprint and one dash for enduro, which might add in different parameters in terms of how many laps are left, how much time is left in the session. All of these at your own discretion and user preference to be able to change. And so that's how this, uh, this setup actually works. If you like this configuration video, please give it a thumbs up. I'd love to know in the comments box below what else you'd like to be able to see, especially as it relates to sim racing. And uh, if you've got any comments at all, please, hmm, 